What for you is the most common memory of the Indian Parliament? The hallowed ground of Indian democracy. For me, it is the never-ending I will talk while you talk tendency that refuses to die. That never-ending please keep quiet, please sit down as if the most important requirement of being an MP is to show that during school, if you went to school that is, you would let neither the teacher nor the classmates speak at all no matter what they were saying. And continuing on the same theme, while some MPs get to be loud, disruptive and even abusive, some members barely speak. I mean, I sometimes think that those sitting at the back are not even, well, MPs. I know, I know, no need to take offence, just a casual joke. Four days before our Independence Day, something odd happened in the Parliament. An MP of the Mizo National Front, an NDA ally that voted against the Modi government during the No Confidence motion, had his mic switched off in the Rajya Sabha while arguing that it was wrong to call tribal people in Manipur Myanmarese. Now, okay, MNF is just an ally, but surely BJP MPs will fare better. Well, not really. Loro S. Foze, Naga People's Front MP from the Outer Manipur constituency, told the Hindu that he had wished to speak on Manipur in the House during the debate on the No Confidence motion moved by the opposition but was advised informally by his friends in the alliance, particularly the BJP, not to speak on the issue. Two states, two houses and two MPs representing two states, two MPs who have a constitutional right to speak for their people and both are silenced because, well, they can be silenced. Why is it that Northeast leaders can be shut down as and when needed? Why do the pleas and requests of Northeast MLAs remain in cold storage and taken out only for political gains? In this week's episode of Decoded, we look at why Delhi corridors want to act East but not listen to the East. But before we move forward, I have a request to make. Over the years, East Mojo has gained substantial amount of readers and viewers from within and even outside the Northeastern region. But we need your support to keep going. The process is simple. Please visit our website through the link in the description to subscribe to East Mojo. You can either choose the lifetime plan or the annual plan. Your support will help keep East Mojo the way we have always been, independent and unbiased. At East Mojo, we remember the Oting incident and the days following it like the back of our hands. And as our documentaries, decoded episodes, regular stories and several stories show, we are not lying. Hours after the massacre took place, BJP Nagaland leader and the darling of the mainland media, Temjim Imna Along, termed it a genocide. We have seen Along laughing and smiling his way into the hearts of millions, but I am guessing he was not far from smiling when he penned this letter. There can never be any justification for such kind of massacre targeting innocent civilians. The innocent victims were labourers returning from a hard day's work and were not armed with any firearms whatsoever. It is therefore tantamount to war crimes during peacetime and amounts to summary execution as well as genocide. This is what Imna Along said in his statement. This was a top BJP leader condemning a security forces operation in the strongest words possible. I will not even ask you to imagine the kind of uproar in Delhi power corridors if such an incident had happened in that part of the country. Yet, what happened after Along's letter? That is very simple, nothing. Because what was going to happen? Action against security personnel? A careful review of what went wrong? The one statement that Amit Shah made on the murders only made matters worse so much so that the residents of Oting slammed Amit Shah's comments. And oh, the genocide became another chapter where nothing came out of it. No justice prevailed, but hey, one cognac person became a Rajya Sabha member after all, so there is that. Then there is the demand for Frontier Nagaland, or the never-ending Naga peace talks, or the repeal of APSPA. Are we closer to a solution? As a Naga, do you think these issues have been addressed adequately? Let us know in the comments. You might be thinking why are these guys talking once again about something that happened so long ago. You see, that was not an exception. This is what we are trying to point out. Yeah. 
A small state with barely 11 lakh people as per the 2011 census, located in one corner and connected mostly via one highway. One flood in Assam and its quickly go by fuel situation in Azol. Since March 2021, a month after the coup in Myanmar, the Mizoram government has made numerous requests for aid. The state battled the pandemic while taking in thousands of refugees and yet, what was the response? The number you have dialed is currently busy. Please try again later. And wait, let Chief Minister Zoram Thanga explain what is happening. From the COVID-19 and now we are uh, surrounded by the trouble right from the Bangladesh, sending a good number of refugees. Then from Myanmar, sending a good number of thousands of refugees. From Manipur, much more came. And now we are refugees. We are having refugees, more than 50,000 here in a small state. I do not know how we are still eating our food. So, Government of India has not given us even a single rupee, nor even one kg of rice as additional. But still, we are sharing our foods together with more than 50,000 refugees. The state has also passed resolutions against the UCC, which we too spoke about in a previous video and the recently passed Forest Amendment Bill. And what was the response to the objections raised by the Mizoram Assembly against the Forest Amendment Bill? Yes, exactly that. Now, I know, especially after the Manipur violence, some people are of the opinion that 50 million refugees have overtaken Mizoram and now have Manipur on their minds. However, according to official data, close to 40,000 refugees are currently staying in Mizoram and about 4,000 in Manipur. Now, if Delhi had paid evidence to, let us not forget, a genuine human crisis, who knows how things could have been different. But why pay attention to a crisis brewing 3,000 kilometers away? And no, we are not limited to just two states. Let us talk about Tripura. The Tribal Autonomous Council had to fight a year-long battle just to get elections conducted. The official reason was COVID, which, by the way, did not stop elections in Assam and West Bengal. But TTADC can wait. The tribal leaders have been appealing for years to make the Roman script official for Kokborok, but no progress. 10,000 teachers lost jobs. No worries. Unequal distribution of resources between the tribal and non-tribal regions. Don't care. Drew refugees from Mizoram saying their rehabilitation is not going as per the plan. No problem. Meghalaya? How many of you know that Meghalaya technically has an inner line permit? Technically, we say because, well, our centre has not bothered to approve ILP in Meghalaya even though the Meghalaya Assembly passed the same in 2019, two weeks after the CAA. This is so old that since then Meghalaya has had fresh elections too. But hey, it is all good. Sikkim too has been asking for ILP, but not now. Wait till elections come closer. Then we will see promises, claims and assurances. Until then, well, keep asking and we will see. No wonder a Sikkim MLA said recently that without the support of Prem Singh Goli's party, the BJP will struggle to get even 500 votes. And Manipur? Wow, where do we even start? We know where to start. We have a lineup of all the videos that show exactly how well the Delhi corridors have handled the issue. The PM does not tweet about Manipur and does not visit Manipur, but cares, we are told. Okay? Now, do not get me wrong, some Northeast politicians have the center's ear 24 7. Look at the CM of Assam, he is possibly the biggest politician from the Northeast. Hemant Biswa Sarma probably has the PM and the Home Minister on speed dial, and make no mistake, when the BJP needs to listen, they do so. In Himanto, they not only have a powerful Assamese leader, but also perhaps the most powerful Hindu leader in the region. No sooner than the alliance came under the name of India, Himanta Biswa Sarma became the CM of Assam Bharat. Himanta Biswa Sarma is a seasoned politician and his power comes from those who know that is not listening to him will mean a catastrophe that well even the BJP cannot afford. Similarly, Arunachal Chief Minister is also a darling of the centre because look at his Twitter account. He does not go five tweets without thanking the Prime Minister and the Home Minister. Let us also not forget that Arunachal is perhaps India's most strategic state given its proximity to China. But wait, 
Despite all the love and affection showered on the Arunachal Chief Minister, the state is no closer to solving the age-old issues between locals and Chakmas. Why? Because, well, why? Let us also not forget, all the troubles in Manipur will have absolutely no impact on the 2024 elections. Barring Assam, which clearly is with the BJP, other states contribute so little to the overall tally that even losing these states will not affect the Delhi power corridors much. And hey, it is not like the BJP will lose in Tripura, Arunachal or even Manipur. It is quite clear that for Delhi, Act East is conditional. As long as the East does what the centre asks them to do, it is fine. But if you have your own opinions and views or God forbid, your dis you disagree with the centre over something, all the best. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to East Mojo. For any queries, put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications.